My name is Niji Morakeo. I'm speaking out from the Joshua Generation Trust, a ministry based in Nairobi, Kenya. I have a prophetic word for the body of Christ, for the body of Christ in Kenya and the body of Christ at large. It's relevant to all. It's about a, a dream, a prophetic word God gave me about the body of Christ, about an attack by spirits of infirmity who have been conjured by occultic groups to attack men and women of God and to attack saints in order to stop and slow down the advancement of God's kingdom. I got this uh, revelation one night when I was sleeping and I had a dream. In this dream, there were some people playing on a field. I was one of them near houses and all. There were young children, there were elderly people. But as activities were going on, people were playing, having fun. Something had been taking place and nobody seemed to notice. What was it? There was something that was growing out from space into the earth. It had come so near us, it had come down near us, nobody seemed to notice. It looked like an asteroid or something that looked like a DNA growing, like a growth growing out of space into the earth. Nobody seemed to notice. Everybody was busy with their activity. And all of a sudden, I looked at it. It was creeping in silently. And I said, wow, this thing seems to be creeping in. Nobody's taking note. It seems to be something strange. And then I realized it was a satanic movement. It was something satanic about to attack the church in Kenya here. And I drew out a sword, and that sword, I tried to cut it because I knew this thing is going to try and attack some of the children around us. And I wanted to get rid of it before it could attack people. And I noticed a snake came out of it. Out of that thing that came out of space, a snake came out. I tried to cut the snake. Each time I tried to cut it, it was escaping. I tried to wrap down my hand, I tried to cut it, it would disappear, appear elsewhere. And I was, you know, I was left baffled, wondering, how come the sword seems not to be able to attack it? And that was when I woke up from that dream. In another dream again I had, confirming the same. I was inside a building and there were people outside playing in the compound. Young people, old people, you know. And from inside I could see a lion on the outside of the building, outside the compound, by the defense compound, and roaming around. And it looked like a very sickly lion. A lion that was very sick and had something, you know, contagious that could spread. And I went outside, ran outside the house to warn the people in the compound that, look, there's a lion outside going around the building and, you know, it's sickly. Make sure that none of the children will get contaminated by that virus the lion had. And, you know, by the time I got outside, the lion had already come into the compound. And I understood in my dream that that compound was Kenya again. And God was saying it's a spirit of infirmity that have been unleashed against the body of Christ to slow them down. It's that lion, you know, like the Bible says, the devil goes around like a roaring lion, you know, seeking whom he may devour. And that lion there typified a spirit of infirmity wanting to attack the church. The compound there was Kenya. I mean, that lion has been going around other nations. And you know, you hear stories of attacks that on believers in other nations, even men, women of God, prominent ones. Now, this time it's trying to come into this compound, which is the body of Christ in Kenya. And immediately I sounded the warning, I discovered when I got outside, the lion was already in the compound. And you know, as I sounded the warning, the older men and women began to carry the children and run away from where the lion was. I mean, they were moving with good speed. You know, which is a good sign of you, or, you know, some mature believers. And I also began to remove children out of the way. So that the lion coming in, it wasn't trying to attack or bite, but it, it was spreading this contagious virus anywhere it went. So we had to get the children out of the way. I also carried some children out of the way. Saw a child who had fallen down, running, lifted him up. And then we now focused on trying to scare the lion out of the compound. I woke up from that dream and I was baffled. I began to wonder why the sword which I brought out did not cut the snake. Immediately I knew that snake was an attack against the body. It was a demonic attack. But I was wondering because the sword is supposed to be the word of God. And I know the word of God should be used to overcome the enemy. So I was wondering why it didn't. I went into prayer. And as I went into prayer, I began to have visions in the day again. You know, God began to show me another scenario about that same snake. This time, I was in space, standing somewhere in space. And this snake had become like a dragon. And I saw it trying to attack me. And as it was trying to attack me, 
I knew something was very wrong because I was trying to rebuke it with the word of God. It wasn't going. And then all of a sudden, you know, I heard God say, close the door between you and that serpent. Like I could put a force shield between the serpent, the dragon, and myself. And so what I did, I, 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 I said, with the key of David, the keys of the kingdom, I shut the door between that dragon and myself. And I noticed all of a sudden, there was like an invisible force field around me. The dragon could not bite, could not attack me anymore. It was trying, but it was hitting something in between myself and the dragon. All of a sudden, I began to wonder, no, that's happening. How do I now get rid of the dragon? And then I heard God say something which gave me a revelation about this attack that is against the church. As I continued there in space, seeing the dragon, now it could not attack me because of the force field, because of the door I had locked between myself and the dragon. Then I heard God say, send that dragon back to where it came from, to the cultic group that activated, send it back to them. And I was wondering a bit about that. How do I do that? And then I heard God said, you have the keys. You have the key over that dragon's kingdom. You have the keys according to Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 18. Uh, I paraphrase the last part. It says, Jesus Christ who was dead and now is alive. He has the keys. The keys of hell and the keys of death. Hell there is the kingdom of darkness or the darkness. And you know, in Matthew 16 verse 18, he said already, upon, he will build his church upon this rock. And the gates of hell, the gates of the kingdom of darkness, shall not be able to prevail against us. So we have the keys that open or lock the gates of that kingdom of darkness. That means we have authority over the kingdom of darkness. And he told me, command that devil, because you have the keys that control it. Command it to go back, to go back where it came from, to go back where it came from. And that's how I rebuked with that consciousness that I have the authority over the kingdom of darkness. And I commanded that dragon to go back and I saw the dragon going back and disappearing. Brethren, what am I saying here? We have the keys over hell, the keys over death. They are part of the keys of the kingdom given to us in Matthew 16 verse 18 and 19. Whatsoever we use those keys for, heaven will back us, the kingdom of God will back us. Whatever door we shut, the kingdom of God will shut. Whatever doors we open, the kingdom of God will open. These are the authority we have as believers. Included in these keys, Jesus said he will give us after his death and resurrection, are also the keys over the kingdom of hell and over death. We can control hell and death. And it is with these keys that the believers are supposed to rebuke these spirits of infirmity. When you see believers attacked by some strange sicknesses, strange diseases and cancers, rebuke it as a spirit. It's a spirit attacking their bodies. I know there are cases that are just medical, that are caused by viruses, pathogens, or just some ailments, stress, you know, on organs. And yes, medical science is given by God to deal with this. And I know there are cases of infirmity where we just rebuke the infirmity where we just use the word of God and speak to the infirmity to melt, the mountain to melt. But in these kind of cases, you will find that not only medical science, but even speaking to the mountain might not work. And many times Christians are baffled when they see cases like this. A, a Christian suffering a strange disease or cancer, a man of God. We've seen it in America. It's happened in America. Unfortunately, great men of God dying from cancer and all manner of attacks. We've seen it in other parts of the world. But God is telling me that in Kenya, we are about to see more of that happening because it's being conjured by occultic forces that want to slow down the church. So church, we are going to have to know that some of these cases may not work by medical science. Some of these mountains may not even go by just speaking the word and speaking to the sickness to go. Some of it you'll have to address a spirit that is behind the infirmity. A spirit that is tampering with the genes, DNA, cells, atoms, organs of that body. You need to rebuke it and speak directly to that spirit of infirmity and command it to go. Remember, you have the keys of the kingdom. Included in the keys of the kingdom are the keys over hell and over death. 
In another segment of these teachings, I'm going to show us a bit about these keys and how to use them. But please, I want to encourage the body of Christ, particularly in Kenya, we are about to see an influx of strange diseases and sicknesses being used by the devils to attack men, women of God and saints. So we have to be prepared to use our authority in Christ to know that there are some cases where it's a spirit of infirmity that needs to be rebuked and addressed directly. God bless you. I pray that we'll have victory because this is victory that Jesus has already given us, having triumphed over the devil. In the next video, I'll show us some keys on how to use these principles and these authorities in Christ. God bless you. Peace.